Hey guys, Red Bear Mo uh, Red Bear with Red Bear Modeling uh, coming at you with another video. Yes, I know. Been a while. Um, last video, I don't know when the last video I made was. Uh, it was a long time ago. I'm sorry about that. I was trying to make more videos. Never actually came out the way I wanted it to. Uh, didn't follow through with it. Sorry about it. Uh, mainly because it was the one month I spent at camp as a counselor actually working. Kind of threw off my whole one month plan. And then I just kept getting more and more. And it was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Trying to catch back up. And keeping it somewhat within a 15 minute limit. Because I didn't want to bore you guys. Because <laughs> I know I do sometimes. Uh, anyways... I have some projects uh, I've been working on. I'm probably not going to show you the complete. Actually, I'm not really going to show you some of the completed build, and it's not really about those. Uh, there was a group build I was entering in, and it's some school projects from my aviation class. Uh, I've been working on, uh, and one of them was supposed to be a P400 slash P39 uh, kit for uh, UK scale modeling's World War II group build. Um, would have been my second entry. Um, probably not going to get that done. Uh, mainly because I got thrown a curve because I was going to do that one for a school project as well. Two birds, one stone. However, I was just assigned this today. And I am very happy about it. <laughs> I've been assigned the B-17G Flying Fortress by Ravel Monogram in 148th scale. And, yes, I know it's a dated kit, but it is a good kit in 148th scale for the B-17. Uh, I have built one of them so far. It was a really nice kit. I liked it. <laughs> of course, that was back when I was, like, 9, 10, so... Uh, See, see how that goes. Uh, I'm hoping to make improvements on this kit than not what I've done on that kit. Compare it. I might do a comparison video afterwards. I'm not sure which one I want to do or if I want to go and do aftermarket decals. Um, he was wanting me to do ye ye turn it into Yeo Pub. Uh, not sure about that. <laughs> um, so yeah. On to what is inside the box. So on the first tree, you get your prop, it consists of your prop hubs, all your wheels, which have your thread, de your tread detail, you have uh, the tail gun and the bomb sight, bombardier's yoke, uh, you got chin turret 50 cal, uh, you have your, I want to say belly turret, and then your top turret, there's some exhaust pipes, you have uh, 50 cals, all through here. Or 30 cals. Uh, depends. Uh, you have some pretty good detail for the interior here on the uh, side of the cockpit walls. I uh, wish I could show you <laughs> a little bit better detail. Now, last time I tried, this is my second take, by the way. Uh, last time I tried uh, it, I hit the wrong button. So, here I have to try and show you. Yeah. There. And then you got your uh, ammo boxes, which has uh, wood grain. Always a nice touch to see. You then have your uh, seats, your yokes. I guess uh, things spin the have the propeller spin. Your turret rings. Yeah, you got your instrument panel. Not the most detailed instrument panel, but you know, it's an instrument panel. Radio. Some more seats. And it's about all for the sprue. On to the next brew, which is kind of why I'm like, mm, do I really want to turn it into a the uh, yield pub? Um, where's my knife? Oh, there it is. 
Also, historically in the past, you've been able to build this at school. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to do that or not, so you guys might just be able to follow along. This is like a nice little... This looks like a the a big bulk bulky part. Um, this tree features your two fuselages. You have your uh, thing for the chain gun here, which is why I'm like, mm, do I really want to convert it? <laughs> okay, uh, you have your chin turret itself on here. You have some crew members. It looks like maintenance crew mostly on down here. You have your engines. And your, I guess that's the cowling ring. Looks like a main cowling ring. Your, I caught, this is your front seat and bombardier area cockpit and navigator right here. And you have a bomb cart, which uh, when finished should look roughly like this. Oh, those wheels were probably for this. Now that I think about it, that's about what it should look like. Uh, I put my bombs on mine like this because uh, the bomb on the, or because the bomb bay, if you look, is molded in a closed position and uh, kind of a hassle removing plastic, especially when you're like 9, 10, heavy modifications. With the grandfather looking over your shoulder, it's like, mm, I don't think that's a good idea. So yeah. Then you have, I guess this is your uh, radio room. That's either your radio room. Yeah, I'm going to say that's your radio room. Uh, and you got your uh, catwalk for the bomb bay here and your bomb rack. I'm going to show you, and then I'm going to show you the uh, interior here. It has all this rip, nice ribbing and uh, like wiring in it molded into the side. Now there are. Some eject, ejector pin marks uh, in the ribbing. I doubt you're really going to see it, though. Uh, I mean, if you're looking at it with a magnifying glass, you're probably going to see it. Of course, I'm not too sure about mine, because mine's hanging up, and I'm basically seeing the other side. <laughs> and you got, looks like some oxygen tanks on here. Looks like a pedo tube. Looks like a horrible place for a pedo tube. Looks like it's gonna get broken off. You got uh, your another tur top turret mount. Next bag I have is the clear parts. Oh yes, and it's all uh, rave or raised panel lines. Uh, I don't think there's really any seam or uh, recess. Check. Okay, there is some like around the uh, bomb bay, but the rest look pretty much raised in the doors. So yeah, if you're not a fan of that, you're not gonna like this part. That part of this kit. Um, so yeah, this these are the uh, clear parts. You got your. Uh, Main windscreen, your ball turret, your tail turret, your, I guess it's the top, your nose, uh, the top turret, the slidey bit, <laughs> and for the uh, in the radio room, uh, you got your waist gunners. Okay, and these two are your uh, the two sides on the nose. You got various little windows here and here, and here. You got a little dome and a little navigation thing. So yeah. Very hand, handy to have your clear parts. Uh, they all have the raised uh, rivet detail on them. And it looks like they have some flash on them too, so you're, you're probably going to have to take it to the flash. On to my next bag, which looks like it consists of the wings and some bulkheads. Bulk 
Okay, so here's the next sprue. We have our uh, rests for our seats in the middle here. And you have the uh, tail tur turret itself. You have uh, two, you got four bomb or two bombs on this sprue. Uh, they're molded in half. You have the, you have two bulkheads, and then you have the uh, bulkhead where the tail wheel goes in. Uh, and then you got your two wings and a thing for your uh, tail wheel. And there is, on one of the bulkheads, there are details on both sides. And then uh, on one, it's just the one side. Looks like there's supposed to be some radios there and some oxygen tanks. Oh, and you have your uh, horizontals, to, uh, both in halves. So you got your left horizontal on here. I guess this is your left wing, too. Yes. And there's no detail up in the uh, in here, from what I can see. So. This is my last bag I have. <laughs> so, yeah. Last bag, and that's on to... Uh, the decals, instructions, and the little extra bit I got that come that I was surprised I had in this because the one I bought and paid money for uh, didn't have it, and for some reason the free one did. So oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is your this screw consists of your right wing, your uh, right stabilizers, your two landing gear your landing gear legs, uh, two more bombs. Uh, this is the uh, avionics cover. It looks like. For your instrument panel, you got another bulkhead. Uh, and then it looks like this is where your landing gear goes. Is in here, and this is the side of it that's going to be visible. So yeah, that's all the parts in the kit. Now there are two marking options uh, that you can do. You have a uh, cow hound, which is the one I did. Uh, like oh, hold on. the one I did a while ago, and then the one that I did, and then the one I didn't do is El Lobo. Uh, yeah, I don't know why the lighting in this is so bad, but you know, El Lobo. And one silver, one's olive. Decals, they feel a little thick. They're old. Kit was made in 77, so, or not 77, well. No, the molding was made in like 70 something. So it's, it's one of the older kits. Not the oldest kit I could have gotten though. <laughs> or I've built. And next up is the uh, instructions. This is what they look like right out of the box. Um, they, they give you a little bit of warning, like, hey, this is what you do to build it. This is how you do it, you know. And it puts you in, with, surprisingly, the tail wheel and the belly turret before you do anything else. So you blow all your turrets and then start on the interior. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just build interior up, paint it, put it together like you normally do, put, build up the wings, put it together, paint. Now, it does come with crew members. Um, my problem with the crew members is it doesn't really tell you how to paint it. What it says for the uh, crew figures is refer to the box 
sides for colors used in painting the five figures. The full leather flying jacket suit was only used in early years of the war. The jacket continued in use, but the pants were changed. And well, if you take a look at the side of the box, which I will show you. That is the side. This is These are the photos you get on the side of the box. There are no crew members ever shown at all. So, uh, probably want to do some research on uh, World War II bomber uniforms if you want to represent it accurately in a diorama. Uh, I just did the your normal leather jacket with, like, green pants, <laughs> uh, brown, black shoes, you know, what a bomber crew would look like, sort of, so, yeah, um, a lot of my people in my class were asking about glue types, and, uh, where to find it, what, what it does, uh, so, and how to use it, so, uh, expect another video on that coming up really soon <laughs> um uh well not really a video but they were asking for a demonstration on that and i'm not sure if i'm gonna get to do it in class or not so uh probably gonna do that probably gonna also show this product off to some of them uh, because miss my teacher he only has talked about using this this is all they've seen because we found a box that had a bunch of these that were used and dried up, and the model was, like, really bad. <laughs> uh, whoever was working on that model uh, trashed that model, basically, using this glue. It, this glue just eats plastic. <laughs> it has its uses. It's useful. Uh, that's why I have it. Uh... It's tackier than normal glue, so yeah. Well, that's that's for another video. Or my glue types that I use. Um, so yeah, that's that's another entry into the uh, bill. Uh, that's my second entry. My first, my next entry. I was hoping, and I'm really hoping I can get it done. Is the USS uh, Enterprise CV6. Uh, really pushing to get that done. <laughs> uh, I've only just started. I haven't sent in any photos of it yet. Uh, probably should. Uh, and that one has this, like, microscopic photo etch railing. So, yeah. <laughs> As always, model on. See you in the next one.